And so we know that the jinn was able to morph and change form and come in some type of reptilian form. And since we're talking about being in the higher dimension, or as uh, some of the modern ufologists, such as Alex uh, Collier would say, a, a density, we're talking about being at one of the superior densities at that time. Uh, animals, trees, plants, all the different things were able to communicate, right? And so uh, that's how come you see always the depiction of the, uh, the reptoid jinn in whatever fashion was able to communicate with Eve. And here's where we have a little bit of difference with the Christian interpretation coming from Islam. Um, Muslims don't put any blame on Eve being the mother of sin or the birth of original sin. Such concepts are, are ludicrous. The fact that any soul would bear the burden of another is, is idiocracy. Allah the Most High is just. And every soul and son of Adam bears their own weight. No one bears the burden of another. No one bears the burden of another. Not Eve from the very first moment, not Jesus later on. Part of the story that gets confused and sometimes we get lost. We gotta go back to always the fundamental, which is what's the fundamental in the story? La ilaha illallah, there's only one God. God tells Adam, remember, I'm your Lord. You obey me. Don't eat from the tree. But see, the interdimensional beings come in the form of morphing and say to Eve, get knowledge and you will know the truth of everything. And so Adam and Eve both eat, and both are sinful. And Adam being the leader of the two, and this is very important, and it's clear from the very start that those who try to blame Eve for the original sin are, are placing a burden on I'm placing a burden on our mother that you have no right to do that, right? How dare you suggest that your mother is blameful for you? You, you take a, uh, responsibility for your own actions. Adam was the leader, and why? Important part of, of fundamental, that Eve was created from Adam's rib. Mm. When we say that angels are created from light, and that jinns, the other interdimensional beings, in all their various shapes and forms, and other races, are all made of some form of smokeless fire, right? However we want to interpret that into modern days. And we are made from uh, mud and clay, and how we want to interpret that from flesh and bone of the earth. Well, Eve was created specifically, not from mud and clay by God, but from the rib of Adam. Right? And it's an important point. Why? It shows very clearly the patriarchal system that Allah, the Most High, established from the creation of Adam and Eve. And if you want to get into some of the strange myths around the importance of patriarchal society, then you can go into some, some of the uh, narrations of, uh, of the character of Lilith. Um, that we are not able to confirm 100% from Islam, and, uh, you know, we're not getting into all of the strange details of the story, like I said. Adam knew he had made a mistake. And so straight away, Adam asked Allah to forgive him. He didn't mean to do anything wrong. It's just that Allah told him that there's only one Lord, and you're supposed to listen to Allah. But Shaitan, this other race, jinn, came and said something to them, that by eating from the tree, they would be able to get greater knowledge and know more about Allah and the truth of the reality, even though it was something that they weren't supposed to do. Now here is something really, really important from a spiritual point of view that you must understand. Adam, our father, was so pure of the spirit and freshly created that he did not understand 
how messed up the system was. He couldn't comprehend that this other creation or this other race who knew of the existence of the Lord Most High would lie about God. Adam, just, it just never occurred to him that anybody would lie about God. How could that be? Adam, oh, by Allah, have mercy on him and peace and blessings be upon him. He didn't understand how the other race could lie about God. It was incomprehensible to him. But the die was cast. And so Adam and Eve were sent to the earth. And as the Quran very clearly says that Adam was made to be the leader on earth. It wasn't a punishment. It wasn't a punishment. It wasn't a punishment. It was for us to prove that our father was correct. In what? Knowing that the trust that God gave him wouldn't be abused. And what is that trust? To believe, la ilaha illallah, that there's only one God. And so Adam and Eve are sent to the earth. But the story gets messed up. Because Adam and Eve are sent to the earth, and just like you think it should be, it's not how it is. Adam and Eve don't get sent together, ladies and gentlemen. According to legend, Adam will land somewhere near Bangladesh, that we now know as Bangladesh, and Eve somewhere around Africa. And according to narration that we have, they searched the earth trying to find each other because they knew that their survival as a race was dependent on reuniting and begging the Lord Most High and seeking His forgiveness and promising to do and bear the oath of our race to remind all of the children of Adam that there is only one God. They long to find each other. And as a mercy, God finally let them. After God knows how many years of searching the earth, Adam and Eve, and one of the most romantic, epic stories, again, the details are incredible if you go through the legend, finally found each other on a mountain called Jabal al-Rahmah, the mountain of mercy. This mountain exists on the Arabian Peninsula today. 